And then uh, let's now first try to find the cost of uh, this strategy where you are ordering independent of each other. And then we have the cost function for both of these products. So we have the G of uh, Q, which is uh, the K lambda divided by Q plus one half Q H, which is the cost function. And we have to add for both of these uh, products this uh, the cost for the independent strategy. So we have to find the optimal order size, which we have done, and calculate the cost for, for that uh, optimal order size. And we also remember for the formula I presented a uh, short time ago, in earlier today, that the G of the optimal Q is uh, equal to the square root of 2K lambda H, which can be used in this case. So the G first for the hex nuts of the optimal Q is then found to be uh, using this formula here for uh, and the parameters for, for the hex nuts and we will find out that this is um, a total of 387.30. using any of these formula here for with the parameter values for, for the hex nuts. And then similar for the mollish rules for the optimal uh, Q will be 515.75 by using the parameter values for the mollish rules and then calculating the cost. And a total this will be 903.05. No, 903, of course, 0 0.05. So this will now be the total cost for the independent strategies for these two uh, items. But then we should try what will happen if we are coordinating the orders. For example, if we want to plan with a cycle time the same as the, the cycle time for the hex nuts for both items. And then we need to adjust the order size so by using the same rate we will actually meet zero inventory at the same point. Otherwise will be uh, what we also will, will see, we should now uh, try to compare the costs with the independent strategy with the order size or, or the cycle time for the optimal cycle time for the hex nuts and then also with the optimal cycle time for the mollish roots. In the latter case then we have to reduce this size and with the same rate meet exactly the zero inventory at this point. So we have to adjust the order size to meet the cycle time that we actually want. <coughs> and then we can uh, reduce the cost because we are able to coordinate the orders and we, are only, we only have to, to deal with the, the ordering cost once. So in this case we will have a function which is the G, let's call it the HM, which will be the K multiplied by the demand divided by the Q for one of the items, because this will now be the same. If we have the same cycle time, then that will mean that the demand divided by the order size will be exactly the same. So it doesn't really matter if we are using the hex nuts or the mollish demand and order size because the value will be exactly the same. 
but the holding cost will be different, so we need to add the Q H H H and the Q M and the H M. So we have to add the holding cost for both of these two items, but only use the ordering cost once, since we are coordinating the order. But what we now need to do is to find the optimal, uh, or to find the actual order size to meet the cycle time that we actually need here. So, let's now try first to, uh, to find the order size for the molly shrews if we are using the cycle time for the hex nuts. If you are using this cycle time, 0 0.5168, then we need to order the demand of the molly shrews in that time period, the demand for the cycle time, which means that we need to adjust it upwards to, to order actually more than we wanted because we want to increase the cycle time here. So now, let's try to find that one and uh, multiply the annual demand, which is uh, 14,000, with the cycle time of 0 0.5168. <coughs> and then we have the Q, Q mark, this is not the optimal Q according to the EOQ formula, but this will now be the Q for the order size for the molly shrews, which now should be the demand for the molly shrews multiplied by the cycle time for the hex nuts. Like this. Then we are increasing the cycle time and also increasing the order size, which now is 14,000 multiplied by 0 0.5164. And this will give us a value of Q of 7,230. Which we now should try to find uh, the holding cost, because we know, in this case, that the G, the cost function for, let's now denote this as the optimal strategy for the hex nuts, and the new strategy for the molishers, will now be This will actually be the same as we have found here. Nine, no, as we have found here, of course, 387.30. Because this is the optimal strategy for the hex nuts, but then we need to add the holding cost for the molly shrews, which now hopefully will be smaller than this value because we don't have to include the order cost. Because the order costs are now included in the optimal strategy for the hex nuts. So here, this will now be 387.30 plus one half of the new number of items here, the new Q size, 7230, and multiplied by the holding cost for the molishers, which was 0 0.095. which give us a total cost for this strategy, which should be 730.71, which certainly is much smaller than this value. And here, this was uh, yeah, approximately 300 and uh, 
43 approximately the holding cost for the demolishers with the new strategy here ordering 7230 to make sure that we have exact delivery at the exactly the same time as the hex nodes and we can coordinate the order and then we have to check the other option which is now to calculate the op the order size of the hex nuts which is not optimal but it's adjusted according to the cycle time for the molishers which means that we should meet at this point instead of this point and that means that we need to reduce the order size of the hex nuts with the same demand here so we just uh, displace this line so they will meet at this point of time and then we have the demand for the hex nuts multiplied by the cycle time of the molly shrews which will give us a new order size which then is 7756 which is smaller than the optimal order size in the independent strategy, which was 10,328. Then, let's try to calculate the cost in this case. So this is now the cost of H and the optimal M strategy. The optimal M strategy, we have already found the cost here, 515.75. And then we need to calculate the ordering, no, the holding cost for the hex nuts plus the average size of the stock when we are using this order size, 7,756. And multiply by the holding cost, which is 0 0.0375. which again will give us a total cost in this case which is 661.18 which is the best alternative of these three so here with this strategy we can order independently and have uh, delivery at certain points here which is not dependent on each other it's, it will be cost us a total of 903.05 we can adjust the cycle for the hex nuts to the molly to to the optimal cycle for the molly shrews or we can adjust the, the cycle time for the molly shrews to the optimal cycle time for the hex nuts three different alternatives and in this case we can see that using the optimal order size for demolishers would give us the lowest value of the cost function so this is the best strategy in this case of course there are possible there are formulas which are actually more advanced that can find a coordinated order which is not necessary one of the optimal strategies for one of the two different products in this case which might be rather uh, an a even better solution uh, but this is not a part of, of this course but you could should also know about that but here of course coordinating orders when you're buying from the same vendor will usually be a good idea instead of using the independent strategy for each of, each of the different products so I will uh, also upload and um, a word file with this solution I have one more example which I will not present in this lecture but uh, it's problem 417 which I also will upload in front of, so you can have a look at that solution and that's another example on the production situation where you are producing instead of buying and then you need to calculate and find the uptime period the period of production and also have to reduce the uh, the holding cost by the uh, the fraction uh, of uh, which is the difference between the
production rate and or the consumption rate and the production rate. Now we should look at uh, this topic. We should start on that one. We need to finalize it uh, next week. But we have so far seen the situation where we have a fixed price. The price is independent on the order size, which means that we can use the formula shown here for the relevant uh, cost in this um, cost function, which is the ordering cost and the holding cost. And we can find a balance between the size of, uh, of ordering and, uh, and the size of, uh, of storing inventory. Uh, but we have also seen that there is a third part of the cost function, which is called the purchase cost, which so far has been a constant. It has been independent on the size of the order. If the price is fixed, you have to pay the same for each item, even if you are buying uh, or ordering once a week or once a year. The cost per item has so far been the same. But now, we will look at a situation where you have the possibilities of getting a discount. If you are increasing the size of the order, then you will have a lower price. And then, of course, also the purchase cost will be relevant, because you can save a lot of money on buying inventory on the purchase cost uh, by rather ordering more than you usually would have done, and you will, might have larger holding cost, but you will save money on the purchase cost. And this needs to be considered in, in the models where, where you want to find the optimal order policy. And as we also can see here, we have two different, at least in this course, we have two different types of quantity discount model. One is what we call the all unit discount, which means that if you are ordering more than a certain amount, you will have a discount on all the units in the order. The second one is called the incremental discount, means that the discount is applied only to the number of units above the breakpoint. So you will pay the same for the first number of items, but if you are ordering more than what we call the breakpoint, then you will have a lower price for those in excess of the breakpoint. So let's now try to demonstrate or, or show this uh, situation in, uh, in a graph. <coughs> Here we have the cost function of buying according to a certain number of, uh, uh, or, or a certain size of, of the order. So the Q value is now in the x axis here. And you're given breakpoints, in this case, at 500 and another breakpoint at 1000. Which means that if you are buying less than 500 units, you will, only, uh, you will have to pay 30 cents, in this case, per unit. But if you are ordering at least 500, you will get a lower price, 29 cents. And if you are buying more than 1,000, you will get an even lower price per unit. Which means that the total costs will increase per unit here up to 499. But if you buy the last one, 500, you will actually have to pay less. So the total cost for the purchase here will be less if you're buying 500 than if you were buying 499. And the unit price will, as we can see, redu be reduced from 30 to 29 cents. And similar, the next breakpoint, break you will now 
by increasing the size, it will increase the, the cost of uh, the purchasing cost will be increased by 29 cents per unit. But when you reach 1,000, the total price or the total cost will be reduced again. So it will be, uh, well, you will save money on buying more if your optimal strategy is close to the breakpoints. Uh, the other strategy is like this. You have to pay, you ha still you have breakpoints of 500 and 1000, but now you have to pay 30 cents for the first 500 independent. If you are buying more than 500, you will have a fixed price of 150, which is 500 multiplied by 0 0.3. Uh, but then the next uh, the, the next price here will be 29 cents for the next 500, but if you are buying more than 1,000, you will have to pay 150 for the first 500 and 145 for the next 500, a total of 295. And then you will have a lower price for those uh, exceeding the breakpoint of 1,000. And we can also see that the property here uh, of the optimal solution for the all units discount, the optimal will occur at the bottom of one of the cost curves or at a breakpoint, which we will see in a, in a short while. Or one will then compare the cost at the largest realizable EOQ value and all the breakpoints succeeding it. But on the incremental discount, the optimal will always occur at one realizable EOQ value. So we have to compare the cost at all the possible EOQ values, which is within the scope of that particular price. But we will first look at the all, unit, uh, all units um, discount. And here we can see the cost function. The first cost function here is the cost function in our example, which was a price of 30 cents. If the unit price is 30 cents, we will have a cost function which looks like this. And what is bold here is it within the scope, within the Q size, where this price is the actual price, which is less than 500 units. Uh, the second cost curve here is the cost curve for a price of 29 cents per unit, which is of course lower at any point than the first one. If you're buying 29, uh, if you're paying 29 cents, it's, it will always be uh, less costly than buying 30 cents. But this is only valid in the scope between 500 and 1,000 items per order. So here, if even if you have a minimum cost here formed by the EOQ formula for a price of 29 cents, it will be around here, you cannot use that amount because you will not get that price here. So you need to increase the order size up to 500, which, it, which is the lowest quantity where you get the new price. And that will sim be similar for the third alternative, which, which is a price of 28 cents per item. The cost curve looks like this, but the price is only valid from the breakpoint of 1000 and at the bold line here. So the bold part of each of the cost curves is the part which is valid for that particular price and that particular order size. So here, what we need to find out first, we need to find the optimal order size for the price of 30 cents, the original price, which will be around here. Then we should check against, of course, we should also find the optimal order size for the second price, but the optimal order price for such a pr uh, for such uh, order size for such such a price will be around here, which is not valid. So we need to increase and check what is the cost if we are using 
the breakpoint or the lowest quantity that we, where we can get that price. And similar, here we need to check that breakpoint, which is the lowest quantity where we can get the price of 28 cents. So here we have three dif different options. One is the traditional EOQ value, the second is the first breakpoint, and the third is the second breakpoint. In this example, three different options where we need to compare the costs for all these three options. Here is the cost curve for the second, uh, the incremental quantity discount. And here we can see that we have cost curves that will meet at the breakpoint. So this bold curve is what is valid for a lower order size than 500, the breakpoint. And then this curve will continue here, but it's not valid anymore because it will be just replaced by the new curve, which will continue here. And again, meet at the next breakpoint, and then we have to follow the curve which comes here for the new price. But here, we can see that we have an option here, which is one possible optimal order size, minimum cost. We have another one here, and this is also within the scope of that particular price. But the lowest point for this cost curve is around here, which is actually without the scope. So in this case, this is not a possible option, and when the uh, second curve has a lower breakpoint, uh, has a, a lower uh, value uh, in, in the, the breakpoint here, when the, when the last curve has, a, has an optimal which is without the scope, and the scope for this curve here is larger than 1000, then this is not a possible solution. We will see example on that uh, later, but first we will focus on the all unit cost. Not this one. This one, um, and I will, uh, yeah, I think I can go through this uh, example quite uh, fast in 15 minutes before we end th this lecture. So we have uh, still, uh, also this time, we have to sh use one example from the textbook, page 220, example 4.4, and we have three different prices, and this is actually the same example as, uh, as we can see the graph from here. We have three different options, and we have breakpoints at 500 and 1000. The C of Q, the cost per unit function, uh, or, the, or, the, or the cost uh, function, the purchase cost, will be 0 0.30 if the order size Q is smaller than 500. It will be 0 0.29 if Q is larger than or equal to 500, but less than 1000. And it will be 28 cents. So we have three different options here, 28 cents if Q is larger than or equal to 1000. So this is now the, the function of, uh, of the cost per, uh, per unit. Um, this should actually be multiplied by Q. So the unit cost are these values and multiply by Q, then we get the, uh, the cost of one order. <coughs> Then we have to calculate the E of Q value with the different price, uh, with the different price alternatives. So let's now find the Q. Let's call it the Q zero, which now is uh, the square root of two K lambda divided by the interest rate and the C zero, where this is alternative zero, the original price, and this is alternative one and alternative two. 
the optimal order size in this case will uh, we also might have to define the the order cost and the, the interest rate which is here order cost of eight uh, annual demand is said to be 600 in this example and the interest rate is said to be 20 percent So now we have the values in the, for the parameters in this example, and we can easily find the optimal order size for a price of 30 cents, C0, this one, <coughs> which is exactly 400 in this case. So if the price is 30 cents, we should buy 400 items. And 400 is at this point, and we can also see here on this graph, this is the minimum point, minimum cost at an order size of 400. But we should also check what is the optimal order size for the other alternatives. Let's call that the Q1, which is using the same formula, 2k lambda divided by interest rate, and now C1, which is the second price, 29 cents. Optimal order size would then be 406. <coughs> but 406 is lower than the breakpoint. So, since 406 are around here, minimum point of the curve, and the curve is increasing, then the lowest cost will be exactly at the breakpoint. So, we need to check what is the cost at the breakpoint if we are ordering the 500 items in, in this case. Uh, and similar, we do that with the third price, the Q, let's call it the Q2, which is now 2k lambda divided by i and the C2 value, which is 28 cents, which will then give us a value of 414, which of course is much lower than the breakpoint of 1000. But we can also see that here, that the, the lowest point of the curve is down here, but the lowest possible cost we can get that price is when you reach the breakpoint here. We have to increase the order size to meet the breakpoint. So now we need to find or compare the costs of these three possible solutions. We have three possible solutions. One is the E of Q value of 400, and the two others are at the breakpoints. So let's now try to calculate TRC of and use 400 here. TRC of 400 will now be use the uh, cost function including the purchase cost. So we have, or we can just write the general formula first, the TRC of Q will be lambda divided by Q multiplied by K ordering cost plus one half of the order size multiplied by i and the c, which will be different for the different options. And at last, the purchase cost, which is uh, uh, will be the demand multiplied by the price the price for the annual demand. And what is different from the different alternatives is actually the C value, which is, has three possible options, either 30 cents, 29 cents, or 28 cents. So let's now first try to find the TRC value of 400. Then lambda is the same, 600, K is the same, 8, Q is then 400. 
plus one half of 400 multiplied by the interest rate of 20% and multiplied by the cost, unit cost, which now is 30 cents for this uh, amount of the order, 400. And then we also have to add the purchase cost, which is the demand of 600 multiplied by 30 cents, which will give us a value here of 204. So the total relevant cost for the first option with the setup cost, holding cost, and purchase cost, now we also need to include that one, will be 204, which is approximately here. Second option, TRC, total relevant cost, of the alternative where you can get a lower price which is the breakpoint at 500. So if you increase from 400 to 500, you will get a lower price, which means lambda or the demand and the uh, ordering cost are the same. The Q will now be 500. One half of 500 multiplied by the same interest rate and the lower price of now 29 cents and plus the annual demand of 600 multiplied by the price of 29 cents will give us uh, here a total cost of 198.10 which we can also see here that this value is around here which is lower than 204 so here it certainly is better to increase the order size from 400 to 500 because then we will have a lower price and a lower total cost. And we need to check the third alternative, TRC of the third, uh, third alternative, which is the second breakpoint, 1000. If we increase the size of the order even more, we will use the TRC function, now divide by 1000, find the average of 1000 and use the price of 28 cents and also use 28 cents in the purchase cost here. Which will give us a final or a total cost of 200.80. Which is at this point, which is maybe not so easy to see, but this point is actually slightly higher than this point. So in this small example, we can see that we have three alternative costs and using an order size of 500, which will give us a price of 29 cents, is actually the alternative that will give us a lower, lower cost. We can increase the cost to one increase the order size to 1000 which will mean that we get an even lower price but to store 1000 item will then be so costly that this alternative will actually be more expensive than this alternative so here among these three alternatives in this very small example the best alternative will be to order 500 at a price of 29 cents so as a summary for this discount type we should compute the eoq for all alternatives use the e of q value which is the highest re realizable eoq value which here is 400 in this area here and then we should check with the breakpoints of the lower uh, of the when you can get uh, another a lower price per unit. Yeah. So at least that was the theory. I will also go through one one more example, numerical example uh, on on this uh, uh, discount type, and also then the next week present the other discount type, the incremental quantity uh, discount, uh, which is the the two discount types we will. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, and in this course but there are of course lots of different 
other options of, of these cons when you come into real life. Okay, I'll quit this lecture and uh, as mentioned, remember the assignment number two, which should be delivered by tomorrow morning. And then I will hopefully be able to evaluate and give you some feedback during this weekend.